SwiftUI gives us the onDelete modifier for us to use to control how objects should be deleted from a collection. In practice, this is almost exclusively used with lists and for each. We create a list of rows that are shown using for each, then attach onDelete to that for each so the user can remove rows they don't want. This is another place where SwiftUI does a heck of a lot of work on our behalf, but it does have a few interesting quirks, as you'll see. First, let's construct an example we can work with. A list that shows numbers, and every time we tap the button, a new number appears. Here's the code. At state, private var numbers equals a new int array. At state, private var current number equals one. VStack, list, for each numbers, id backslash dot self, text dollar zero. Then button add number, self dot numbers dot append, self dot current number, self dot current number plus equals one. Now you might think that the for reach isn't needed. The list is made up of entirely dynamic rows, so we could write this instead. List numbers, id backslash dot self, text dollar zero. That would also work. But here's our first quirk. The on delete modifier only exists on for each. So if we want users to delete items from a list, we must put the items inside a for each. This does mean a small amount of extra code for the times when we have only dynamic rows. But on the flip side, it means it's easier to create lists where only some rows can be deleted. In order to make onDelete work, we need to implement a method that will receive a single parameter of type index set. This is a bit like a set of integers, except it's sorted, and it's just telling us the positions of all the items in the for each that should be removed. Because our for each was created entirely from a single array, we can actually just pass that index set straight to our numbers array. It has a special remove at offsets method that accepts an index set. So add this method to content view now. Func remove rows at offsets index set. Numbers dot remove at offsets offsets. Finally, we can tell SwiftUI to call that method when it wants to delete data from the for each by modifying it to this. Dot on delete perform remove rows. Now go ahead and run your app. Then add a few numbers. When you're ready, swipe from right to left across any of the rows in your list, and you should find the delete button appears. You can tap that, or you can also use iOS's swipe to delete functionality by swiping further. Given how easy that was, I think the result works pretty well. But SwiftUI has another trick up its sleeve. We can add an edit done button to the navigation bar that lets users delete several rows more easily. First, wrap your vStack in a navigation view, then add this modifier to the vStack. Dot navigation bar items, leading edit button. That's literally all it takes. If you run the app, you'll see you can add some numbers, then tap edit to start deleting those rows. When you're ready, tap done to exit editing mode. Not bad given how little code it took. 